Soka Universe. Yeah, yeah, today is gonna be the first big warm day here. I'm wearing spurs. It's day one yesterday, but it was decided by my wife. I gave her three options. She said this one looks best. Probably I agree. But, uh, it's kind of busy these days. I mean, I, I actually didn't expect much soccer to be played. Uh, because I didn't check and I was because I'm also um, how, how to say distracted by another big sporting event as the Stanley Cup playoffs where we had two game sevens yesterday at this moment I only know the result of one which didn't exactly go my way Boston winning game seven against the Maple Leafs uh, the second one well let's see I'll watch this later the highlights and there's another one so I'm distracted with that but today I'm surely gonna be all soccer today is the day where probably the Premier League could get decided I actually have a gut feeling it that will not be the last act but um, you know I had a few gut feelings this season and they all went the wrong way so I'm not gonna say much more on that but yeah today is City against at United right um, and then there's also a small matter of the Coppa Italia semi-final between uh, Milan and Lazio and I know it's not gonna be the better game but that's probably the one that I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch Milan fan I'm hopeless I'm a hopeless Milan fan uh, but you know I probably will check back and forth uh, I wish that the zone had a picture in picture something like that that would be great Get there. Um, but yesterday's games, um, four countries that I want to talk about. Um, first one, uh, let's start in Germany. There was also a cup semi final between Hamburg and RB Leipzig, where Leipzig took it was the first semi final ever. <laughs> Last time that they were uh, that uh, Hamburg was in the cup semi final was actually in the year that Leipzig was founded. Which 2009, it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, let's not get into the whole Red Bull thing. Uh, Leipzig it took an early, early, early they should have doubled it in the 15th. I think it was Paulsen that got the, yeah, Josef Paulsen got the uh, first goal. Um, and then uh, a, a ridiculous sequence where Leipzig hits the post. Uh, I think it was the right post. The ball goes back out, is put back in, and then Savica has an open goal and very close to the net, and again hit just the post. Uh, and then Hamburg gets an equalizer because of a stupid defensive error. I think Kevin Campo, and I know him because he played so well for Salzburg, and since then I think his career basically stalled. Um, loses the ball and a uh, Hamburg player has a clear path on goal and lobs over the goalkeeper makes it 1-1 uh, crowd going absolutely crazy uh, at that point but there was not much coming uh, Leipzig makes two goals one very early the second half one uh, halfway through I think uh, Forsberg made the um, I think it was an own goal was for the, an own goal for Leipzig and then Forsberg with a thundering shot well you know there was really no way to uh, save that one and Leipzig moves on to their first cup final uh, the final is decided between Bremen and Bayern uh, this uh, this evening so yeah uh, that was the first do or die game where shall we go next let's go uh, Netherlands uh, just saw the highlights of Ajax against uh, Vitesse was actually oh, traffic manager. That was actually uh, interesting. I mean, I, I think if I would have had a choice, yes, I'm watching. I, I actually didn't want to watch yesterday. I saw a little bit. Uh, I saw the last head, ten, 10 minutes of the Spurs game. Uh, uh, but if I had to choose only one game, I probably would have looked for the Ajax game uh, just for fun of watching, because uh, Ajax is so exciting. And yeah, take out. Uh, Took a while, 
but I think it was only one nil at halftime uh, where Ziyech scores uh, after a nice uh, assist by Tadic. Um, then uh, De Ligt gets the 2-0, then a penalty makes it 3-0. Uh, then almost off the uh, kickoff, Ajax made the 4-0. I think it was 58th. Um, but it was deemed offside and then uh, Vitesse actually puts one back. Uh, Ajax gets another pretty clear penalty to make it 4-1 and uh, they put one back 4-2. So, you know, fun game to watch. Um, kind of met my expectations. Ajax, I think, has now over 110 goals this season. Uh, and yesterday we were looking uh, how many teams, uh, I, call, I call it how many teams in the Dutch league have a positive goal differential. I think there are only six. That's absolutely nuts what PSV and Ajax are doing to the competition there. Um, but at least, you know, having PSV in the league keeps Ajax kind of honest. And I'm really looking forward to their uh, semi final against Spurs. I'm actually thinking of making a preview video, but this depends on how much time I will have at my hands to do so. Speaking of Spurs, also an interesting game against Brighton, uh, who really need every point now. Um, and they went to Spurs and did what you would expect a defender to do. Uh, uh, um, a team in the lower levels would do. Defend, 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 and defend very, very, very deep, kind of shutting down the center. Have Spurs come from the sides. Spurs still had chances. Um, and probably the best soccer uh, move of the evening, I think, quite easily. And that was uh, when uh, ball in Dele Alit plucks it out of the air with, with his right foot and then shoots with the left foot, and yeah, it is turned around. Uh, by the keeper, but that that move would have deserved um, a goal. Absolutely, uh, it was a really great move. Uh, that's the stuff I want to see. And, and you know, in in the end, it might turn out that I, you know, for me it's hard to say as Spurs fan. I mean, I I really don't dislike them. Uh, it was just that for most of the time, uh, our Arsenal was playing a better uh, game, but at the moment Spurs is really great to watch. They are really fun side to watch. And actually, I have to say I like Harry Kane. I'm really impressed by Hyun Ming Song. Uh, Dele Ali maybe, I uh, haven't seen too much, but what Walt he did today, absolutely worth worthwhile. This is a great team to watch. And then uh, you have Eriksson, who was yesterday uh, playing out of his mind. I think he, he really... He is the pass giver that uh, other teams are sorely missing. Absolutely great performance out of him. Uh, he's maybe out of his mind, he's a little bit strong, but you know, he, he was... From what I, I, I could tell, everything went over. I think even the pass to Dele Alli was uh, by Eriks, but I'm not 100% on that one. You know, I watched the highlights and I watched many highlights this morning, so it all is a little bit of a haze. Anyway, um, I think Alderweireld had then the great chance to make it one where he actually slips and shoots and because of that it becomes very dangerous but it hits only the post and you know, it curls along uh, the line and there were a few more chances but you know since the center was done there was really not much you, you could do except long range shot and a long range shot in the end wins it for Spurs hands I'm wearing uh, th uh, through Eriksen who just takes it, hits it hard, puts it into the corner, and thank you very, very much. These were three points. Very vital for Spurs uh, in the Champions League race. And, you know, I think Brighton would not have hoped for any points here. Uh, but, you know, this would have been a bonus point. It was so close, so you've got to feel a little bit with them as well. But, yeah, Spurs goes on to win that one. In the other game, I haven't seen the highlights, but I saw the fastest goal in Premier League history. Yeah, it was easy. I mean, um, they didn't have the highlights ready, but they had the, um, uh, the game you could watch in full length if you wanted. The game was ever uh, after less than eight seconds. The goal after less than eight seconds. Um, 
and usually those really fast goals are scored when the team that gets scored against has kickoff. And so it was, the ball was played back, then uh, the defender wanted to shoot it high, of high and far, that gets blocked and Long can, I think it was Shane Long, uh, has it and can pull it into the net. 1-0 and then uh, in typical fashion, uh, Waldfer gets a late equalizer on 19th, so he had a goal in the first and a goal in the 19th, which is something, I like that symmetry around it. Of course, the point doesn't help either one, because Watford, uh, you know, seventh spot gives you an Europa League spot if uh, Manchester City wins the cup. And for that reason, uh, well, Watford has two chances to make it into the Europa League. First one is finish seventh, and the second one is win the cup. So I think this is a very, uh, <laughs> a very juicy um, position that they are in. They might make it seven, but I think this is a, a, a extra tight race. So I would, in that sense, you almost want that Manchester City wins it because then, um, then best of the rest actually gets rewarded as well. So that's that's that. And then we have Spain, where uh, you know probably most. I know my brothers did. Most people watched Barcelona play at Alaves, having ridiculous amounts of possession without any real uh, big chances. I think there was one by Suarez in the first. Uh, they get the breakthrough through Alenia. And then, uh, seemingly, they got a second goal. Uh, somewhere between Piquet and Umtiti, but Umtiti is offside. It was uh, shortly thereafter, after the first goal. And yes, uh, Messi was not playing, as were a bunch of other players. And if Umtiti is playing at the moment, this means we are talking second string squad. Not really, but uh, to me, it's my unpopular Umtiti, who is so important to France. Uh, is at the moment only a reserve player at Barcelona. That doesn't sound quite right either. Anyway, uh, so the goal, it's a shot by Piquet and MTT is offside, clearly offside, uh, but I, you know, the shot was deflected ahead, ahead of him, he needed to go, so he could have given the goal maybe there. But then the funny stuff is that uh, they look at it at VAR and then they see there's a handball. And even funnier is that the VAR booth in, uh, in Alaves, the screen is facing the field and is very high so that all the players can see what the referee is seeing. Kind of public viewing for, uh, for the players. Um, I'm not so sure if that's the best thing. I, I, I think it should be in a booth, it should be uh, carried off. I mean, in that case, it was then a clear decision. Penalty, Luis Suarez uh, slows, slows, slows it home. And then for some reason, Messi comes on, has one nice move, we safe to the bar. And the game ends 2 0 Barca, who, if Atleti loses to Valencia tonight, another big game uh, happening this evening. Then Barca are champions. I actually want them to need a win. But, you know, Valencia is in good form. So let's see what they will be doing. And then two games that had a big implication on rally relegation. Valladolid against Girona. Valladolid gets the win. 1-0. Uh, Girona looks at this moment in a really, really bad shape. They keep losing and losing. They looked quite safe for most of the season. Now they cannot get out of the funk. And this is usually where teams then will get relegated. So uh, Valladolid, vital win for them. And then Uesca uh, against Eibar. I think it was Rayo against Uesca uh, this, week, this weekend that didn't find a winner. If there was a winner, then either one of the teams would have had, had, had a chance. This, you have the feeling now that it, those two will be the ones relegated, as I said in my big roundup video yesterday. Uh, 
they get the win now against a bar it will probably too little too late i think that's the main action i mean there was some stuff in austria but i don't follow the qualification round that much i know that rapid was winning and they probably will get the seventh spot for the absolute ridiculous playoff so just i i keep saying it uh just in case you were in, in, interested in Austria, we have a championship group and a, a qualification group, which is basically also a relegation group. Oh, great. Let's try to lose some pebbles. Um, it is that uh, sixth place team, and, uh, and, and let's take out Cup winner out, out, out of the equation because that team can't. can't more. So it's six teams in every uh, group and very important uh, the sixth place team has not a chance of getting to the Europa League playoffs. So the sixth place team, no. However, the winner of the qualification group, which is the seventh place team, gets a home game against the fifth place team for the right to play in a two-legged Playoff for the final Europa League spot against the fourth place team. That's crazy. I actually, I actually think if they would have played, just uh, you know, we have 12. I think a uh, league of 16, maybe even 15. I mean, there were thoughts about that. You know, something. I think a 16 league. If you wanna not have always the. I mean, we had for. A um, long time Austrian Bundesliga had a uh, league of 10 teams um, where you were playing each other four or four times. It got a little bit boring, especially if there was only uh, one of promotion, one relegation spot, and uh, there were some troubles associated with that. However, this mode doesn't do it. I would like to go back to what they did in the late 80s, early, early 90s. Again, two leagues of 12. And then um, the top eight play for the championship. Um, then the bottom four and the top four from the second league uh, make a round for relegation, which I thought was really, really interesting. Uh, promotion relegation. And then um, you have the lower league uh, playing for going to the amateur levels. Oh, okay. I don't want to talk too, too much about Austria or, or already spent too much on it. Tonight, three big games Atleti Valencia. Valencia Atleti, I, 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 I don't know it. United City and Coppa Italia. I have to say, I will watch the Coppa Italia between Milan and Lazio. Um, it's nil nil from the first leg. I know I will, I'm gonna watch this one, uh, but the other two will be better, better games, so don't unless you're a hopeless Milan fan that I am. And I said it yesterday, I don't think Milan deserves the Champions League spot. I'm still hoping, but I don't think they will deserve it. I will not lose many tears over that if they don't, don't get it. I just hope that, the, I think the project that they're doing is well on well, balance way, might get, uh, might get derailed by uh, financial fair play, but yeah. Uh, I think Milan will continue to exist and I hope that they will get eventually there. I read good, good things about tran transfers and let's see where it goes. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on any of the games or topics that I've been talking about. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.